Well, as you can see, Ohio does have its redeeming qualities, and today turned out to be a great day. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Now, although I don't have much going on as far as our RV or anything else going on, uh, the van series, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the next installment. I'm going to start working on uh, some of the exterior stuff that we decided uh, we wanted to get rid of. So let's go ahead and take a look at those clips. And if you haven't checked out part one, uh, be sure to do so because uh, we're going to start into part two right now. Well, guys, we're working on the van again today. And when we say we, I mean me. I just went and got my son. He's going to come out and help. But I got the roof rack off and this thing is heavy. This was falling apart. I bet you at one point this was really nice, but um, being that this was in climate control for as long as it was, uh, it really didn't allow this wood to deteriorate like it will now because we don't have climate control to store it in. So I'm glad we got it off there because the only reason it lasted as long as it did is because of what I just mentioned. Um, I will have to say this. Uh, these panels need cleaned really bad. We talked about this with my son. We talked about just reupholstering everything, but these panels might be a pain in the butt to do. I don't know if we can find somebody that might want to do it. Maybe. Um, but anyways, I'll say this. This insulation that was put in here from the factory, um, wow, that stuff really works. Because when I took that insulation out, and put my hand up against this roof in the bright sunlight, it was wicked, wicked, wicked hot. I mean, it that insulation definitely works, so we're definitely gonna put it back in there. And, and that insulation's all around. It's all around the entire van. It's uh, in the walls. Oh, this thing's pretty quiet and pretty snug. Uh, we've got a bunch of parts that's coming in. Um, we've got a, a new vent fan, even though that's a fantastic fan, it is got a broken support and the way it's mounted on top I don't like very much. Um, we're gonna have to probably do some modifications ourselves to uh, mount the fan that he got, but he got a low profile fan that can be open uh, as you drive down the road and uh, it's um, you know, manually open it. Uh, if you close it, it's real slim line, which we'll show you that whenever it comes in. He got his refrigerator, uh, that's gonna be coming. Um, he got uh, his furnace, uh, a couple little you know a heater uh, just a lot of stuff there's so much stuff coming so let me show you what we're doing here um, basically for the holes uh, these are the bolts these are the uh, bolts that ran through the roof to hold that rack on and uh, I'm putting uh, these washers which are stainless steel with rivets and polyurethane um, same stuff that they use to keep the um, windshields in cars so basically I put a little polyurethane on the rivet uh, we go through the washer with it uh, we put it up on the roof and then uh, on the underside uh, we put another rivet and then squeeze it and uh, it sandwiches it and let me show you the final result here inside you're not going to be able to see so much it's right there but I'll show you what it looks like on the top and that's what it looks like on top now we can make it finish a little better but you can see he just had butyl tape all the way around and uh, the wood and uh, this is the first time this thing's seen daylight uh, since the uh, late 80s as far as that thing in the middle I have no idea what's going on there I think he's filled that with roof coating um, it's solid so I don't know maybe it's a piece of wood I, I don't know if I'm even gonna mess with it but when we put in the other vent we're gonna have to address that at some point but just wanted to show you what it looked like and we're going to continue on. So we got all those holes taken care of. You can see here, that's what it looks like now on the inside. So it's all sealed off. It's held in place. Uh, we'll put these panels up at another time. Let me show you what it looks like out here. If I can do this without falling. Yeah, you can see it just looks like silicone buttons out here now. <laughs> and then we'll get rid of all this putty and stuff after the fact um, not sure still about that center so now we've moved on and uh, we're getting rid of this ladder there's no sense in having the ladder because there's nothing up there he needs to get uh, 
we didn't really like this luggage rack from the beginning and it was so heavy that thing is so heavy up there um, and the plywood's falling apart so anyways now we just have to peel this uh, thing off I already drilled out all the rivets so we're just gonna pry this off and uh, then fill the holes with rivets so let's see what that looks like because I think that the metal is pulled in a couple of spots the ladders off so this is the first time since who knows when that that paint has seen daylight <laughs> it's around the rivets I'm gonna knock these rivets inside the door then and uh, we're gonna put new rivets in place of them and then uh, just you know fire them up and and make it to where they uh, are secure and tight but I gotta clean that up and uh, push those in so let's do that. just finished right before the rain started and we uh, put the rivets in touched it up with some paint that we just had laying around here not the best job but it'll get the job done so now his van has no rack on it and no ladder so even though the ladder didn't weigh very much that rack was pretty heavy so it's a little bit lighter now and it looks more streamlined and then what we'll do is uh, get on the roof and clean up all that putty and then we've got a like I mentioned a really nice roof vent uh, that we're going to install in place of that one that's up there which that'll be a little bit of a handful and I still have to put the tie rod on the front so uh, we can go get this thing aligned I swear it needs ball joints but the guys at the shop said it don't but it sure looks like it needs ball joints to me definitely looks like the bottom is kicked out more than the front it might just be my imagination but I don't think so my eyes aren't that bad we'll have to ask them whenever we take it up there but yeah this is uh, this is it it's all taken care of on the outside and then I got to put the inside back together all right so it's the next day I got all the roof cleaned off we got all these sealed off there you know just now normal urethane rubber like you'd have around your windshield or polyurethane and it's cleaned up this paint hasn't seen uh, sunlight since the uh, 80s when the van was made so it's definitely brighter than the rest of the van but back here I went ahead and uh, re-glued the insulation back on the ceiling it's probably kind of dark in here the way the lights are but you uh, see it's pretty straightforward I'm kind of glad that it's all glued back up in place and then I had an issue um, I replaced his turn signal cam in his steering wheel with something that Heidi had at her work uh, some Dorman product and it's a, in the help section the problem was is the cam um, well the problem was I installed the cam and uh, <laughs> I started working on this then like a day later and I noticed whenever he moved the van uh, whenever we first tore it apart uh, he didn't have any brake lights so I started troubleshooting everything that's what my test lights here for I started checking grounds and grounding these lights and going underneath the dash and basically there was no power once it came out of the brake switch so the brake switch had power coming to it the brake switch had power coming out of it when you pushed it and uh, that was about it there was no brake lights and there was no hazard lights back here either so after troubleshooting it for about four hours you know and the whole time I'm not listening to the stuff that I tell people if you make a repair and then you're experiencing problems it's related to the repair now I couldn't figure out for the life of me why the brake lights would be affected by the turn signals except when it comes to these old Fords you can kind of see over here in the corner um, they just have one tail light so what happens is just like on trailers um, whenever you push your brakes on uh, both lights light up whenever you turn on your turn signal one of the lights whichever turn signal you turn on get cycled it goes on and off and on and off while the other one stays solid well of course that turn signal is going to affect your brake lights and the way they work so that brings me to something else I always tell my viewers or at least my commenters on my other channel and that is just because the parts new doesn't mean that it's good I've had plenty of starters that I've put on cars that went bad right away and instead of troubleshooting uh, 
you know, I just took the starter off and went and had it tested and it's come out bad. Same with alternators. So I went ahead and decided today, um, after experiencing this problem and troubleshooting all day yesterday, to listen to my own advice and go back to the repair that I made. And again, the problem was is the repair was made and it was a couple days uh, before I noticed that there was no brake light. So I thought that maybe I did something back here when I tore it apart, which I didn't. We went up to Heidi's work and we actually bought another turn signal cam. I installed that one and that one didn't work either. So I had to make the old one work um, and we'll see how long it lasts for him. Um, I told him if his turn signals quit working at any point in time, and at this point it'd just be his right turn signal, he would have to hold up on it. It's just the latch that catches it. Um, the turn signals work, it's just the lever when you lift it, you have to hold it uh, for the light to flash. Now I fix that, so now you know you click it just like normal and click it down, but the repair that I made may not last uh, you know, for the next two, three years, may not last for the next two weeks, who knows. So anyways, I told him that he's just going to have to replace the turn signal switch, the whole thing, um, which is about $100 and you got to tear apart the steering column, it's a little bit more work involved. but. Uh, we haven't really got this back together and started on. Um, so tomorrow, what we're hoping to do is, if the weather's nice, I'm going to put all this stuff back together inside the uh, RV here, inside the van, I should say, soon to be RV. And uh, then we're going to clean it with the Bissell cleaner. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll get a little bit further along so when his parts start coming in, he's got a lot of other stuff and we have to start building his bed and his cabinets and everything back here. Uh, the other thing I have to do is put a battery isolator, uh, which I had him order uh, for the front. So when he starts his van, it'll charge the primary battery. Once that battery's charged, it will automatically start to charge the other battery. Um, and then same with discharging. Uh, if one battery starts to go really dead, it will protect the main battery. It'll be nice because then we've got to get a fuse box back here and start putting in his accessories. But that's it for right now, uh, and uh, we'll pick up the project. Uh, Hey YouTube, it's next installment of the van project, and we got one more addition uh, that I just finished up. Let me show you what it is and what it's all about. Now, most vans, most vehicles only come with one battery. This battery is used to power everything. It's used to start the vehicle, and it's used to power your lights and whatever accessories you may have inside, stereos and interior lights, stuff like that, and then whatever you may have plugged into your cigarette lighter. However, uh, because we are adding a lot more stuff in the back of the van, which is in a future part of this series, there was a, uh, another battery that this vehicle came with uh, that was installed from the factory, but uh, the guy had done some work on it. I, I don't know what happened or why he did it, but uh, there's a lot of things that caused him to take it apart and replace some of the components and one of the components was a relay and what that relay does is keeps these batteries separate now as I may have mentioned before that if you have matching batteries that are identical to each other it's not as big of a deal to have the batteries just connected uh, together with equal length cables the problem lies is when you're at a campground and you're using your accessories in the back of your van and you're running the juice down, you're running the batteries down, you may get to the point where the van won't start. So you don't want that. So what a lot of people do is they make the batteries individual uh, to where they can shut off this battery, which that's what this guy did. He had a disconnect switch on the, on the negative of this battery and run mainly on this battery. Uh, and I'm talking about all the stuff in the back. Then whenever you go to start it up and run it and charge everything, you of course reconnect this battery and let all that happen. Now there's a better way to do it and that is with a battery isolator. And this isn't a high-tech battery isolator. This is the one that's analog and it does it with switches. There are some electronic components in there but still, it's mainly done with switches. Now the problem with that is, if you're doing stuff with switches, there's a chance that it may fail over time, and the component one, the digital one, is a little bit better, but it's also more expensive. 
this came in a kit it came with cables and battery it came with everything now, I'm gonna put a link down below like I do for everything in the description uh, for this and you'll get a couple of long positive cables you will get all the battery ends and it's really easy to do I'm telling you I was gonna let my son do it but he had to go to sleep he's working tonight uh, you literally take one wire that's connected already to the box and you ground it you just find a ground source which I drilled a hole here I don't know if you can see it because of the lighting but I drilled a hole and just put it into the uh, frame or the uh, chassis uh, fender well uh, whenever I cleaned it up uh, so there was metal to metal contact so that's pretty easy you take one positive cable and you connect it to the A battery your primary battery and on the back of this underneath there's a, a post that you connect it to and of course the cable ends are already terminated no big deal there and then you take the other positive battery that is connected to this battery and you connect it obviously to the same terminal that's in the back and then what then all you do is connect it like it is here you just tighten it to the frame and you're finished you just have to find a place for it that's all you need so you basically connect one positive cable to this to the primary battery and the other positive cable from this to the other positive on the battery and then at that point you run that ground and you're done so what does this do well whenever I go to start this van it will initially charge this battery only and as soon as this battery sees like 13.6 volts for 10 seconds or more it will then turn on the switch and connect this battery with this battery and allow this battery start to get charged now how does it work in this case well it's not connected the only time this is connected is when this there's a blue light and it's a pretty bright blue light you'll be able to see it even in this daylight which we'll show it here in a second when that blue lights on both batteries are connected well you see the blue lights not on so the batteries are not connected at this point so what's that mean that means I can run this I can run this a lot and run all the accessories in the back and let's say I accidentally leave an inverter on or something plugged in that I shouldn't or my son does in his case it will drain this battery obviously but it will allow the vehicle to start and once this vehicle starts and gets charged this thing then will flip over and try to start charging this battery or actually both batteries at the same time so it's really nice it's a nice feature he was having problems with the old disconnect switch that was on there you know it was coming loose and he was getting to where he couldn't start sometimes so he had to take the little clamp that was connected to the positive cable and sometimes connected to the battery and it was just a handful <laughs> it was kind of a pain in the butt so uh, in this case he it's all maintenance free so we're in good shape um, I went ahead and got him a uh, 40 amp fuse to run to the back here's the cable that runs all the way to the back and of course we're going to be adding a fuse box to replace that one that's in there it's got the old glass style fuses and it's all exposed there's no cover for it uh, we're going to replace that and then at that point start running wires to the accessories the way they should be and of course that'll be coming up but let's go ahead and show you what this looks like I'm going to try to set this camera up it's going to be kind of hard to do because it's going to shake whenever I start the van but we'll uh, point this down at the isolator and what I want you to see is that the isolator there's again a blue light that lights up kind of this bottom half it's off right now so when I go to start it you're gonna see the camera vibrate you're gonna hear the engine noise uh, you should see nothing for about the first 10 seconds and then you'll hear a click possibly I don't know if you'll hear it over the engine noise but you'll hear a click and at that point you'll see that blue light come on and that means that the isolator is now allowing both batteries to be charged so when I first start it no blue light just this battery is being charged that the camera's sitting on and then when the blue light clicks that means both batteries are getting charged so let's go ahead and start it up and let you watch see nothing and now you'll see it click over. There you go. Now both batteries are connected and the alternator is charging both batteries equally. 
They're both getting about 14.54 volts each. Actually, this battery that's closest is getting about 15.54 volts, and the other one is only getting about 14.52 volts, and that's got to do a lot with the cable length, uh, and maybe the battery also, uh, because it is an older battery. But you can see that this is going to allow him to keep the battery that he's operating off of charged without hooking up the shore power and not having solar, which of course we'll add that in the future. Yeah, I really love this. Now, we're going to shut this off, and you'll see it'll take a little while, but then this thing will disconnect after the engine shut off when it realizes it's not getting any more voltage uh, from the alternator, and it realizes the van is off. So let me show you that. You can see both batteries are still connected. So as far as him hooking up his accessories or anything like that, he don't want to do that at this point. Even if he did, it's not a big deal because this will realize there is no charge coming in and that it needs to disconnect the batteries. It needs to make it to where the batteries are isolated again. We'll just let this go. And it's an audible click you'll hear. And of course you'll see the light just go off. But it, it's a good addition. It's something that... I kind of wish I had for my truck and I may do it on my truck. I have a real nice digital one that was quite a bit more as far as money wise. Um, there you go. It disconnected them. But mine uh, was a little bit more expensive that I was got for my truck. And I think the only things holding me back is I'd really like to move a battery into my engine compartment. I, I think that's the best way to go. Uh, I've got to move some stuff around but I think I can put two batteries over here. Uh, where the regular one battery is. So that's it on the van today. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff that we still need to do, so we'll pick it up at another day when I got more going on. Let's see what happens. <music>